Hello, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In this video, we're going to have a look at the construction and principle of operation of an ignition coil. An ignition coil is simply a step-up transformer that converts the 12 volt battery voltage supplied to it to extremely large voltage that can be used to ignite the air fuel mixture. In order to fully understand the principle of operation of a conventional ignition coil, let's have a look at the principle and the circuit of a conventional ignition system. Now this diagram shows a conventional ignition system. As you can see, the ignition system constitutes of a power supply, which is a battery for this case, 12 volt battery. Then battery voltage will be supplied through the ignition switch to the ignition coil. Here is the ignition coil with the primary and secondary winding. And then some of the ignition coils, they have resistor to limit the amount of voltage supplied to them. So here we have a resistor connected in series to the low voltage circuit. And then the primary winding will continue its path to the distributor breaker points. In here, we have a breaker point or a contact point that will turn on and off the current flow through the primary winding. So here we have the breaker points. The breaker points are turned on and off by the distributor template. As the distributor rotates, they make or break this primary circuit. The secondary circuit, however, is constructed from the ignition coil secondary terminal. Then it goes to the distributor center terminal. The high voltage that is generated inside the ignition coil will be distributed to each spark plug by the distributor. The distributor uses high tension cords, high tension cable or spark plug cable to distribute the high tension voltage to individual spark plugs. And then the spark plugs are used to ignite the air fuel mixture, having received the high voltage surge produced by the ignition coil. Now. Let's go back to the ignition coil and see how it is constructed. The ignition coil, as you can see on this diagram, is constructed from two windings. The primary winding, which is connected to ignition coil positive, and then through some winding, then comes back and gets out of the ignition coil through ignition coil negative, and then go to the distributor. The ignition coil secondary winding, however, will begin at the ignition coil positive terminal then with multitudes of winding, and then it will exit through the center terminal. This is the center terminal of the ignition coil, sometimes known as terminal 4. This is terminal 15, this will be terminal 1, this will be terminal 4, according to terminal designation numbers of ignition coil. Now when we look at the conventional ignition coil, this is how it is constructed. This is a very simple demonstration for looking at the ignition coil construction. As you can see, there are two sets of winding, one made up of thick wire and the other made up of fine wire. The thick wire with low number of turn is called the primary wire. The primary winding begins at ignition coil plus terminal. Right here, we have a positive terminal. It begins from ignition coil plus. Then after some winding, it will finally exit the ignition coil through ignition coil minus right here this is the negative terminal when we look at the secondary winding secondary winding is made up of very fine wire and with lots and lots of turns of winding that is wound on an iron core and then it will begin at positive ignition coil terminal and it will exit at the center terminal here this is the center terminal of the ignition coil now when the ignition switch is turned on and the contact points are in a closed position Assume that these contact points are in a closed position. When ignition key is turned on, battery voltage will be supplied to ignition coil positive. That will force electric current to flow through the primary winding, which is a thick wire. Then the current flows through the primary winding will have a complete circuit through the ignition coil negative and finally goes to battery ground at the distributor. When there is current flow through the primary winding, there is a build-up of magnetic field. Now, magnetic lines of forces, you can assume they are traveling outward in such a fashion. Let's say current flow is started, there is tiny magnetism. Then, as current flow increases, magnetic field will build up. Lines of forces are extended outwards. Then, what will happen when the breaker point interrupts that current flow by opening the contact point? As soon as the contact point opens inside the distributor, the current flow, which was originally building a magnetic field inside the ignition coil, collapses. That will cause the magnetic field to collapse in such a fashion. When magnetic field is collapsing like this, it's like collapsing like this, 
that change of magnetic field will induce extremely large amount of voltage on the secondary winding. So every time current flow is interrupted inside the primary winding, there is a collapsing magnetic field, and that collapsing like magnetic field, assume it like a tsunami taking everything with it. The collapsing magnetic field will generate high voltage because electrons, they have magnetic property, and that collapsing magnetic field will force multitudes of electrons to migrate through this terminal out of the ignition coil, resulting in high voltage surge at the secondary winding. So that is basically, in layman's terms, that is how the ignition coil transforms the 12 volts that is supplied from the battery to thousands of volts exiting and going to the ignition spark plug. Now, in order to increase the magnetic field inside the ignition coil, the primary and the secondary winding are wound on an iron core. Iron core have a possibility of increasing the magnetic field strength inside the ignition coil. So this primary winding and the secondary winding are wound on an iron core. Now the collapsing magnetic field inside the ignition coil, the collapsing magnetic field will induce voltage on the secondary winding. Now induced voltage on a coil is determined by the strength of the magnetic field, the rate at which the magnetic field is collapsing, and the number of winding of the secondary winding. Now, because the secondary winding has extremely large amount of turn, somewhere around more than 25,000 turn, whereas the primary winding has somewhere around 300 number of turns, the secondary winding will have large voltage produced as a result of the collapsing magnetic field. So this is how it goes. Whenever there is current flow through the ignition coil, magnetic field will build up like this. And whenever that current flow is interrupted, magnetic field will collapse. Now, the rate of collapse will also determine the amount of voltage that is to be induced on the secondary winding. In order to make sure that there is fast current flow and magnetic field collapse inside the primary winding, we have to somehow overcome the self-induced voltage that is going to oppose magnetic field collapse inside the primary winding. Whenever current flow is interrupted inside a coil, there is a self-induced magnetic field that is opposing the change. Now when current flow is going to be interrupted in here, there is a magnetic field that is generated on the secondary, on the primary winding as a result of self-induction. That voltage, if it is kept unattended, it will make the magnetic field to collapse slowly, reducing the secondary voltage. So in order to make sure that the primary current collapses as soon as the contact point opens, Ignition distributors usually have a capacitor connected in parallel to the contact point right here. So there is a contact point. When the contact point opens, there is when the contact point opens, there is a tendency of arcing. Current tends to continue flowing even though the contact points have started to open. That will reduce the magnetic field collapse inside the ignition coil. The rate at which the magnetic field will collapse will be hindered if there is arcing at the contact point. So in order to eliminate that arcing and make sure that the primary current stops immediately, capacitors are connected in parallel to the ignition coil negative circuit. So once the contact points open, magnetic field will collapse. The magnetic field that is collapsing will produce two types of induction. There is a self-induced voltage inside the primary that is somewhere around 300 volts, and there is a mutually induced voltage on the secondary that is somewhere up greater than 25,000 volts. It can even reach up to 40,000 volts. That will be used to ignite the air-fuel mixture by supplying it to the spark plug. Now, the self-induced voltage that is generated on the primary winding will be absorbed by the condenser capacitor that is connected in parallel to the breaker point. By connecting a capacitor in parallel to the breaker point, we make sure that current flow inside the primary winding will be interrupted immediately as the contact point open. The voltage that will tend to arc will be absorbed by the capacitor. So by connecting a capacitor in parallel to the contact point, we increase the rate at which magnetic field collapses inside the ignition coil. So this is basically how ignition coils step up the 12 volts that is supplied from the battery to the ignition coil to 14,000 volts or somewhere around 
Now to summarize, the ignition coil is a step-up transformer. It has two sets of winding, a primary winding made up of a thick wire and smaller number of them, and a secondary winding which is made up of very fine wire and so many turns, thousands of turns. The primary winding is connected to ignition coil positive and the other end of the primary winding is connected to ignition coil negative. Both primary and secondary windings are wound on an iron core. The iron core will increase the magnetic field strength inside the ignition coil. When there is current flow through the primary winding, magnetic field will build up inside the ignition coil. It will build up in such a manner. And then when current flow is interrupted inside the primary winding, magnetic field will collapse. You know, this collapse, this surge of magnetic field will induce voltage on the secondary winding. Because the voltage that is going to be induced in a coil is determined by the number of turns of the coil itself, the secondary has multiple thousands and thousands of coils, the output voltage will be in thousands. So we will be expecting somewhere greater than 25,000 volt exiting the ignition coil center terminal. That will ignite the air-fuel mixture inside the cylinder. So this is a simple demonstration of an ignition coil. The actual ignition coil is not exactly like this. This is simply for a teaching purpose. Here we have the primary and the lower one is the secondary winding. Primary winding begins at ignition coil plus and ends at ignition coil negative. Secondary winding begins at ignition coil positive and ends at the center terminal. So this is how the ignition coil steps up. If we have smaller number of turns on the primary and larger number of turns on the secondary, the transformer is a step-up transformer. But if it is vice versa, if we have a high number of turns on the primary and low number of turns on the secondary, that transformer will be a step-down transformer. For our particular case, because we need to step up the 12 volt into thousands of volts for igniting the air-fuel mixture, we are using a step-up transformer. We have few number of turns on the primary. We have large number of turns on the secondary winding. You can assume, for example, on the primary, let's say we have 300 number of turns, and let's say we have 25,000 number of turns on the secondary. That means the voltage that is going to be induced on the secondary winding will be much, much larger because of the number of coils and number of turns of the secondary winding. So, dear viewers, this is how the ignition coil steps up the 12 volts that is supplied from the battery to thousands of volts that is used to ignite the air-fuel mixture in the cylinder. Well, dear viewers, this is all we have for you in this presentation. If you enjoy what has been presented, please smash the like button. If you are new here, do consider subscribing so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Till then, stay safe.